welcome to the Flam Rouge Cycling Podcast. This is our second edition now, and um, I'm looking forward to bringing it to you by myself this time. Um, I don't have anybody with me today, but we're going to go over the last few stages of the Tour de France. Um, I'm looking forward to bringing that to you um, today. So we'll start with the stage that we left off with last time. So we're going to start with stage 17, which was won by Tade Pogaccia. It was his first, well, no, sorry, second stage at the Tour after the individual time trial. And then following him are the next two steps of the podium, which I thought was quite interesting. And then you have Ben O'Connor, which shot up, which was unbelievable because um, no one really knew he existed before the Tour de France, let's be honest, before he won that stage. Um, stage 18 was also won by Tade Pogaccio, which was impressive to win two mount, huge amount of top finishes back to back, which I think was really impressive. Um... Also f- also followed by Jonas Vingegaard and Carapaz. And then Enric Mass, which I think was quite impressive. Um, and then Daniel Martin, which probably was uh, Israel Startup Nation's pretty much best finish on a mountain stage in the tour this year, which is quite disappointing with their riders that they have. Um, stage 19, which is a really, you know... Big victory by a good 58 seconds by um, Mahoric, um, which I thought was really impressive. Um, that he broke away with like 20k to go. And me included gave him absolutely no chance to win the stage. I mean, I thought, ah, he's gone way too early. And then he just demolished everybody else, which I thought was quite quite impressive, actually. Um, and also the fact that... Um, he had got very little sleep the night before with the hotel being um um broken into i think we'll say by the by the police um in france after some circulation that they've been doping which i disagree about and um i think um Maharaj's, um interview after the win on, after the win that day was um was really interesting actually uh, i think you should go check that one out um Going on to stage um, 20, uh, which was um, destroyed, <laughs> I think it's safe to say, by, what went on, which, by an even bigger margin than Filippo Ganna did at the Giro in, uh, ahead of Kaspar Askarin, which was very impressive, actually, to come second in a tour stage uh, before like coming anywhere near a, um, a, a, t- a consistently unbelievable time trial winner. I mean, he won the, the, the championship... Um, for the time trial. And um, then followed by Jonas Vingegaard, which I thought was an excellent performance by him. Um, obviously, Tadej Pogacar finished quite low down he, because he didn't want to take any risks, I can imagine, after, um, just one day before uh, Paris. Which was won by the one and only Walt Van Aert, which was unbelievable. Uh, because... Um, he wasn't thought of as a favourite for the stage. I mean, not personally. I didn't think he was going to win a sprint stage after winning a time trial and, in my opinion, the the queen stage of the entire tour. But to win that many stages and in that many terrains, I think is incredible. I mean, really. And also to beat Mark Cavendish in the sprint was really impressive. I know, I know he was boxed in and if he was out, he probably would have won. But... um. For the circumstances, I think it was really impressive, especially to be Jasper Philipson, who's been really up there with um, Mark Cavendish uh, during the tour. Uh, anyway, um, that's, the, that's the Tour de France pretty much wrapped up. Um, if you have any questions regarding the tour or anything else that is said on the, on the, um, the show, especially if you're watching on the podcast version, uh, you can leave, there's, there is a link in the description on YouTube and on the podcast. Um, to send in your questions, um, which I will try to get back to you as soon as possible in the next um, show. Okay, from the biggest race in the men's calendar to the biggest race in the female calendar, um, it's time for the Giro d'Italia Donna, um, which has changed its name from the Giro Rosa. Um, uh, It was the first team time trial of the tour. I said the first. It was the only team time trial of the tour. Um which was won by SD Works um, by a comfortable margin, and Ashley Mormon Passio took the first pink jersey of the, of the race. But the question was, could she defend it on the next few tough mountain stages? 
the first of which was on by Anna van der Breggen, um, which I can imagine wasn't a massive surprise that she was going to dominate the, the race. Um, the third stage was on by Mariana Voss um, from Team Jumbo Visma, which was um, equally as probably less, not really surprising. Um, Anna van der Breggen again won stage four which was um, impressive to win two stages out of three days. It's not a bad, um, it's not a bad race, especially for SD Works, which at the, at the time was dominating uh, the GC. Um, stage five, sorry, my phone is playing up, was won by Lorana Vibus, um, from Team DSM, which was her first stage winner of the Giro d'Italia Donna, um, winning, uh, winning the first sprint uh, stage on stage five. Um, stage six, hang in there, <laughs> sorry. Stage six was won by Emma Norsgaard um, in a very tight sprint, but it was an it was a it was impressive win, impressive win. Um, stage seven. Uh, was um, won by Mariana Voss, um, which was back in the mountains, and um, it was an impressive win. I think um, it wasn't a surprise that she was going to do well at the Sears race, but it was still impressive nonetheless. Um, Lorena Vivas again won stage eight um, from DSM. Um, it came down to a mass sprint after the three person breakaway was pulled in. Um, Again, impressive win. Um, strong, uh, you have to be to win two, uh, two uh, sprints in one tour. I mean, that's absolutely nothing to say towards um, Cavendish in the Tour de France, but he's, you know, he's, he's, he's Cavendish. Um, Ashley Moorman Passio uh, won stage nine, um, which is probably the biggest success of her season, it has been said. Um, if it is, I don't know. I can't comment because I haven't followed her as closely as I have others. And Afanda Bregan um, again won stage ten of the of the race, and then going into pink to win the to win the overall victory, which I think was impressive. Um, it was very controversial, actually. The um, the Umbarisma rider of um, Mariana Voss leaving a stage early while in the pink jersey. To go prepare for the Olympic Games, which I think was ridiculous because she, you know, she was she was controlling the race, and I think she had the capability to win. And then to just leave, um, which I don't think is the right thing to do, personally. And then um, um, SD Works took a one, two, three after winning the Queen, Queen stage of stage nine. Anyway, coming up is um, the Olympic Games um, to be excited for. Um, the road race is going to be a really interesting battle. I think Walt Van Aert has a shot at it. Um, if Cavendish rides, I haven't seen if he's um, in the starting list, he'll have a shot at it. Um, and I think there are, uh, there are a lot of other riders that could win it. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to watch it live, if it's at um, midnight my time. But um, we'll see. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And then there's the time trial, which uh, which... Is, I think it's going to be a really heated battle. I think it's the two favourites mainly, I, I, I reckon, are um, Wal Van Aert and Philippe Ogana. Um The longer time trial doesn't exactly suit Philippe Ogana, but um, he won the World Championships with a longer time trial, so um, I'm looking forward to see how that turns out. Um, women's race will also be tight on both, both, both races. I am really looking forward to seeing... Um, both of them get fought out for the gold medal and the gold helmet. Um, but anyway, I think that wraps up this week's episode. Slightly shorter, um, hopefully slightly longer episode next week with maybe a special guest, uh, which we will see. Um, anyway, if you would like to leave your comments, send it in on the link in the description or just pop it down in the comments below um, if you're on YouTube. Anyway, um, thanks, thank you for listening or watching and I will see you next week Tuesday. Goodbye.